All right. Going to get things going here in just a minute. Tonight we're going to be talking about OU football. Um, we're just waiting on my co-host for the night, Chris Price. We'll bring him on here in just a second. I uh, hope everybody's having a good night. Um, <laughs> lots to talk about. In, <laughs> lots of things have happened in a short amount of time. But we will get Chris Price coming on here in just a few minutes, and we'll be talking about OU football. I know a lot of people have a lot of emotions uh, of what's going on, but it's, uh, we'd love to hear all of your uh, your feelings, your comments on what's happening and what's transpiring. So I'm going to bring on Chris here in just a second. One. And we'll see if we got him coming here in just a second. Uh, I hope everybody's having a wonderful night. Uh, I hope everybody had a great holiday over the weekend and enjoyed whichever team that you rooted for during Bedlam. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. Lots, lots to talk about, brother. Welcome to the show. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me. Hold on, I'm trying to situate this light. <laughs> We're good. Uh, yeah. Um, some strange, well, let's, we'll, we'll just say what it is. It's uh, been 48 hours or so, uh, and lots and lots have gone down. Let me get your feelings on what's been going on since this all went down. Man, so... Obviously, I was shocked. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what can you say? I mean, you just you just lose Bedlam. He finally shuts down the LSU rumors, which had been swirling all week leading up to the Bedlam game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like USC out of nowhere. And I, I find it hard to believe that it was just something that uh, just came about overnight. He, you know, he tried to say in his press conference that uh, he didn't know USC even had any interest until after Bedlam. And then he woke up Sunday morning and decided to, you know, let everybody know that, hey, I have an interest in this job. So I'm going to I'm going to do the interview. I find that hard to believe, honestly, like you can't sit there and tell me that it just came about like you just lose Bedlam. You clear up rumors about LSU, which I guess technically he didn't lie, but, no. um, I mean, it's still, it's still shocking to me. Uh, but it's a big thing, man. Like, cause he's it, now he's taking coaches with him. Uh, you've already, we've already lost a handful of four star, five star recruits that have decided to, to decommit, uh, from the university of Oklahoma and open up, uh, they're recruiting back up, and now you've got – well, you can't be surprised about Spencer Rattler. We we no, all we knew, knew – yeah, we knew that one was coming. So when people were talking talking about being shocked about that, I was like, come on now, you, like, you, you can't be shocked. Like, <laughs> we knew that was coming – uh, the, the Red River rivalry game when he got benched. Automatically, as soon as Caleb Williams came in, won that game – we knew that uh, that Spencer was was done. Uh, I am. I I want to say I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked because I again I saw it coming. Um, you know, Theo Weiss, Jordan Hazelwood, now talking about they're entering the transfer portal. It's gonna and it, man. They say that it's gonna get worse before it gets better. That couldn't be any more true with this situation because what Lincoln Lincoln Riley has done right now has literally shattered the University of Oklahoma right now. I get that he's not hes not the program. Bob Stoops said it best. He's not the program. The players are the program. But at the same but, – but when you've got top players that are already – not even – we're 48 hours into it, and you've already got players decommitting, you've got players that are entering the transfer portal. And that just – I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's – there's something more to it. Like, I, 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 I don't know what it is. I don't know that we'll ever know what it is. I don't know if he's scared to go to the SEC. He's, I mean, who, 
leaves a program that just went 10 and 2. Mind you, that is a disappointing season with what was leading up to the season for OU. OU had their expectations were so much higher than a 10 and 2, not even going to the to the Big 12 championship. I don't think people really anticipated Baylor to be as good as they were. Um or Oklahoma State, really, for that matter. I really think that, you know, leading into the season, people were thinking, oh, you just going to run away with with the Big 12. And that was not the case. They, You know, you had three teams that were right there. You got Oklahoma State at 11-1, and one, and you got Baylor and OU at 10-2. and two. That, I mean, that's that's not bad. But who leaves a 10-2 no. and two program to go I, to a 4-7? Four, four and seven. That's that's the question, and 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 I agree with every. But here's the thing. I mean, and we all know what it is. It's speculation, and 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 we haven't faced anything like this since 1998. Okay, even when we got Lincoln Riley, it was literally hand. We didn't even know Bob Stoops was leaving. It was just handed to Lincoln Riley. So we haven't felt anything like this since 1998, when we didn't even know we were getting Bob Stoops at the time. So I understand some of the trepidation that the fans have. I understand some of the the heartbreak and, and, and the motion and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with being emotional folks. And I want to, I want to throw that out there right now. There is nothing wrong with being emotional about any of thing that's going on, whether you feel good about it, whether you feel bad about it, or whether you feel indifferent about it, there's nothing wrong you have, in that aspect. And I get that. You have to be emotional about it. If, if you're not emotional, I, I, I don't think that you're, uh, you're a true fan of anything that does. That's not just, Oh, you football. I mean, if, doesn't matter who your team is. If you're not emotional when it comes to that team, then, I mean, to me, that's like deer hunting. So when you're deer hunting and you see a deer, if you don't get buck fever, you probably shouldn't be hunting anymore because you just don't get the same, like, and, it, and it, you know, it's the same with sports. You have to be emotional about it. But, you know, it's, I tell you right now, Katie, he's got to be happy. He's not the hated, most hated person in Oklahoma anymore. <laughs> he's definitely not. And I'm not going to, and I, and I've told this to a lot of people, I'm not going to speak ill about him. If that's what he wanted to do, that's fine. I get it. There's nothing wrong with anybody. And this goes for anybody. There's nothing wrong with anybody changing the situation. If they're not, if, if they're not happy, leave, I got you. And, and, and good on you Lincoln for leaving. And if that's what you needed for your kids, I'm all for it as well. I think what most people, and I, and and I think I'm going to try to speak and I shouldn't probably speak for most people. But I think what most people are upset about, and you you touched on it a little bit, was the press conference the other night when and when Kerry tried to ask him if he was going to go to LSU, and then he's like, hold up, hold up, let me shut you down right there. I'm not going to be the next coach of LSU. Well, you know, if, if that's the case, um, then if you didn't know that you – I agree. You, you have to know that somebody's contacting you. We've known – since the sec, what, second week of September that USC needed a coach. We've known that, or whatever the case may be. It was, whatever, the third or fourth game, USC, we knew they needed a coach. Don't tell me that you didn't know something, because I'm going to be – oh, you and, – and, and maybe it's just 2021. Maybe it's just – we all have, like you said, our <laughs> expectations were high. But OU did not look like OU all year long, and 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 I get it. There, but you can't tell me with Beanbo and and all these people that there was there was there was something amiss. And whether it's one foot out the door or whether you learned three hours before you told Joe C and the president that you were leaving, something didn't feel right. And even um, Dean Blevins posted something about it. He left during. What was it during the bye week or before the bye week? He didn't make his press conference because he had personal issue. Maybe that personal issue was thinking about uh, going to USC. And I, and I get it. And if that's what you want to do, cool. You could have come out during, and this is what I told somebody earlier today. You could have come out even during the press conference and said, you know what, it's not LSU, but I have been in talks with USC. And maybe it wasn't because he hadn't talked to the players, whatever the case may be, but maybe. But we all know what Coach Speak is. If you're a football fan, you know what Coach Speak is. And 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 he did Coach Speak, and I get it. I think, but and, and like I said, when I speak for probably most everybody, they think it was probably the way he went about 
telling people instead of I don't think they would have been mad if he Absol left. I mean, I don't think they're mad that he left per se. I think it's the way he went about leaving. It's but that's and that that goes back to even to Kevin Durant. I was like I wasn't mad at Kevin Durant for leaving. I mean, he was look I mean, he had other options. Cool. No different than Lincoln Riley. If if you found something that, you know, you, you maybe it's a more challenge. Maybe being at OU just wasn't a challenge for you. You've dominated the Big 12 since you've been at the University of Oklahoma, dating back to even when you were an offensive coordinator. You have just been in a, a dominant force in the Big 12. So I think, yes, you are absolutely correct. I think it's the way he went about it. No different than the way Kevin Durant went about it. I mean, you're up 3-1 against Golden State. You're telling them that, you're not sure what you're going to do yet. And then the next thing you know, you release something, you know, I'm going to the team that just came back and beat me. It's the same thing. You literally were in a press conference saying, I'm not going to be the next head coach at LSU. Cool. Thanks for clearing that up. But the next day you're going to tell me that now you're the head coach at USC. And yeah. um, I mean, I'm with you. It's, it's, we have not been, I, I tell you a fact, you know, so we've been kind of, talking back back and forth lately on Facebook about, you know, the rumors. The rumor mill is going to be going around. OU is a prestigious coaching job. Uh, uh, Josie, during his press conference, nailed it on the head. Like, he's going to have people calling him. Like, as soon as that news broke, he probably was getting phone calls. It's going to be a job. Uh, so whatever the rumors are, we're going to be posting about it. Until I will tell you this, I would not be shocked if they have a coach within the next week. They have they have to fill this they 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 have to fill this vacancy. They have mm -hmm. early signing on December fifteenth. You're all al you're already losing recruits. I guarantee yeah. when Bob said, "Hey, we're going out on the recruiting trail," he's probably going to either one go to some of the recruits that have already backed out, or to recruits that have contacted talking about backing out to try to be like, "Hey," but the problem is. Yeah, that's cool. Bob Stoops is the one doing this. And Bob stepping up the way he is is just just shows the type of person he is. But Bob Stoops is not going to be able to keep recruits. They they want to know who their coach is going to be. Yeah. And yeah, he can go out and he can assure them like, "Hey, we're going to get a good coach." That's cool. I know we're going to get a good coach. We're not going to go back to the Slumberger days or whatever his name was or John, John Blake. Blake. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, we've we've had Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley, um, like you said, going back to the 98-99 season. We're not going to get just some random person off the street. But like I said, they're going to have to do it, and they're going to have to do it quick. They're, or they're just going to keep losing recruits because the players got to know, hey, Am I going to fit in the system? Yeah. Because it, it, that makes a huge difference, whether it be defensively or whether it be offensively. You've got to know, like, you you want to be in a certain type of sit situation. And recruits right now, that's why they're backing out. Lincoln Riley's gone. You know, I, I, yeah. I can't blame the five-star quarterback for backing out. I mean, he was coming to a system where Lincoln Riley had already, going back to when he was offensive coordinator, had Baker Mayfield, Heisman Trophy winner, first-round pick. Kyler Murray, Heisman Trophy winner, first-round pick. He's developing these quarterbacks. So if you're a five-star quarterback and all of a sudden the guy that came and recruited you, yeah. well, you're like, wait a second. So, um, man, they got, they've got they got to fill it soon because they're, they're – I think – they're going to lose recruits. I mean, yeah. well, Bob said it best in the presser today. He said it best. He goes, "This isn't." He goes, "When I came into this system, he goes, when I came into this system, we had lost, you know, four years in a row. We hadn't won anything. We had losing seasons." He goes, "That's not what you're facing now." And I and, and I agree with that absolutely, one hundred percent. So there's a lot to look forward to, and I and, and I want the people out there watching. Yeah, Lincoln's gone. You're going to get somebody that's going to do – they're, we're in a way better situation than we were in 1998. 100% way better position than we were in 1998 when Bob took over, 98, 99. So Bob said it best. 
and I, you're right. And I absolutely, he is out on the trail. He probably is on the phone or zooming or whatever the case may be to get a hold of those contacts. And, and a lot of people are posting on, on right before we got on, Oh, this person's going to the portal. You know what? They can go to the portal. And as soon as they see if they got a coach that wants to fit or that they fit the system that these coach, the, the these kids want, uh, they get a coach. Oh man, Jaden Hazel, Hazelwood drops out of the, the portal. He's back. It, they can do that. That's the difference between the portal and actually transferring from a school. They can drop out of right. that portal and say, I want to come back. And, and, and that's fine. And they knew it, and they said it in the presser today. They said, hey, we're going to, we're going to lose some people. We are. We're going to lose some people. And that's going to happen. And, and it is, you're right. Uh, so um, it's going to be okay, folks. I, I get it. I, I, we, and, and that's, I, I think, like a lot of people have talked about, the trepidation and, and, and the apprehension is, is are we going to fall – into obscurity. I, I mean, if I could answer that, I, I, I probably would, but I doubt it. I, I very seriously doubt it. I, I don't know. I can't say why, you know, Texas is doing what they're doing. Oklahoma went through that in the 90s. Maybe this is just Texas's time to go through it. All teams go through it, you know? Um, and, and, but to sit there and go, oh, no, we're going to drop. No, I guarantee you, and, and, and you, you nailed it. They're probably, and, and I already think they have. I already think they have the coach that they want. I really, I honestly do. And I don't know if it's Coach D. I don't know if it's Shane Beamer. I don't know if it's anybody that we've even mentioned. But we know Joe C. We know how he's going to, we know what kind of coaches he's going to go get. We know, I mean, he's done it for basketball. He's done it with softball. I mean, holy crap. He, Joe C. knows what he's doing when it comes to hiring these coaches. So, just give it time. Don't don't read into everybody jumping out of the portal. Don't read, you know, and and don't read into all these commits dropping. They can recommit just as well as they decommitted. They they can. I get you, Mike. You want Beamer gone? I get it. It, it is what it is. Um, but Josie knows what he's doing, and I guarantee, I guarantee, we already either have the coach in mind and it, they're just, it's a done deal or, you know, and Rufus, it, 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 we talked about this. I, I, there's no way I'm going to blow off what Rufus Alexander said. And, and, and even to the point, maybe somebody else brought up the point. Shane Beamer comes in as head coach. Uh, coach V comes in as the defensive coordinator. Maybe he wants to get and try something new. I don't know, but I want people to understand that, and again, I'm just we're just two dudes that <laughs> pretend we know football a lot better than <laughs> and, and and things like that. I mean, I'm not a guru. I'm not I love football. I love I love the University of Oklahoma. I love football and I want to talk about it. Uh, at the end of the day though, I know just as much as the people that are watching now and the people that were listening to the press conference. I know just as much as you do. But to, to I, I'm also in the fact that, and I had a talk with uh, uh, one of my mentors today, and she's a wonderful woman. And I, and, and, and you know, I don't want people to talk. I, I get it. You, if you want to talk bad, I'm not going to to take that away from you. And if you want to talk good, I'm not going to take that away from you. Because you're allowed to have those emotions. And 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 I 100% will back you whether you you're so angry that you want to just punch him or you're, you're happy for him and you want him to, to succeed. I will back you either way because I understand. Football is an emotional sport. We talked about it. OU fan base, Ohio State fan base. It doesn't matter what college you are from. Those fan bases are emotional and they're invested. They, they go out and buy the clothes. They buy the hats. They buy the tickets. They're invested. So what I'm trying to, I guess what I'm trying to get at is everything is going to be okay. We're going to be a lot better than we were in the 90s. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. A lot of the questions have been asked, was this take away from the SEC? No. We're still, that has been signed in ink even before they dropped it and told us that yeah. they were going to the SEC. That's that a done deal. Us, that was done a long time ago. And 
and that could be part of the reason he decided to leave. I mean, he wants to try to deny it or whatever, but, and, and you know, it may be a blessing in this guys. If we do get Coach Venables, he is a defensive mindset. We haven't had a defensive mindset coordinator or a, a coach since Bob Stoops first came. Yep. And, you know, we had a good defense for the first few years he was here, but that went downhill. You know, after we haven't seen a defense in Oklahoma like the 2000 defense since then. Right. We, we've had uh, chances like this year. They were supposed to have a good defense, and at times they did. During Bedlam, they did great. I mean, they had moments, but they also failed on moments. Whereas, man, that 2000 defense was just ruthless. And I think maybe, man, you you bring in Coach Venables, let him be the head coach, and now you get an offensive coordinator that can focus on just that, play calling. You know, Lincoln Riley, he was a head coach and that he was calling the plays. That's a lot on one person's plate, sitting there having to try to control an entire team, and you're worrying about right. your play calling. So now you can bring in another quarterback coach to develop your quarterbacks. You can bring in an offensive coordinator to call the plays while you have a, a head coach. And you still have a defensive coordinator, but you also have a head coach who can bring in that defensive talent. He's done a f phenomenal job at Clemson. And you're talking about a Clemson team for multiple years was hanging with the SEC in the playoffs, you know, between Alabama and Georgia. You know, they were right there with those teams. They weren't getting just obliterated. So, you know, you bring in a defensive coach, that may be a blessing in disguise here in a year or two or whenever it's going to be when they move to the SEC because they're going to need it. If, if, if they want to hang in the SEC, because we all know I love OU, huge OU fan, but I'm also a realist. We're not going to go to the SEC and be able to put up 500 yards every single game and not have a defense. Right. We Yeah, we know that. I mean, that that's 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they if they don't have a defense, so, again, maybe, maybe right now everybody's upset and, you know, we're mad that, uh, you know, yeah, we lost a great coach, but we also lost an offensive-minded coach. And you know what? Alex Grinch is going with him. Alex Grinch, he improved the defense. Yes. But even with his defense in the last couple of years, that defense is not going to hang in a full season playing in the SEC. You're not going to win SEC championships with that defense. That's that that's yeah. facts. Yeah. And, and you're right. And 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 I'm not going to speculate on why he left. I'm not going to say he cuz I I'm not going to be the one to say he's scared of the SEC. Cuz on, there's only two people that know that. Him and God. Plain and simple. If he's scared, he is. If he's not, yep. that's fine. If he wants to, if he wants to move to California and 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 live out there, that's that's Lincoln Riley. And and and, and I applaud you. And I hope that you will succeed. Because uh, I will again, I will never ever wish anybody ill will when they want to do something with their life. Hell, I've done it. I've left a job because I, you know, it was a good job. It just wasn't. I mean, at, at at the time, it wasn't the fit for me, and I wanted to go do something else. Nothing was against it, but it was time for Dash to move on, and you know, maybe it is time for Lincoln Riley. So no ill will. Whether he whether he's maybe, scared of the SEC, you guys can maybe he got bored. All day long, I'll let you, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you do it. But here's the thing. What we do know, what we do know is OU is moving to the SEC. Texas is moving to the SEC. Maybe Joe C and them that maybe they didn't get along with that part. I've heard, again, I hate saying rumor, but I have heard rumor that he was not happy with the with them going to the SEC. You know, and if that's the case, okay, good. If he wants to go out and play in the Pac-12 and rule, and he's probably going to rule the Pac-12. I don't, I don't, I don't doubt it, and that's cool. And if that's where he wants, good. But we 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 got to and Bob said it. We got to focus, and he and he and he nailed it. And just, you said it earlier. Those kids are OU. Those kids are OU, and that's who needs to be focused. That's who the, whoever they bring in as a coach needs to be focused on them, and those kids need to focus on going on that. So I'm with you. I want a defensive-minded person. I want somebody because we all hear it. 
all day long. Uh, you know, hell, there's more people from other states talking about OU right now than oh, I think the state of Oklahoma is. But I get it. And, and, and at the point, right. I want somebody that's going to take us into the SEC. I want somebody that's going to be defensive minded because I agree with you 100%. We need somebody that's going to give us an opportunity to compete. Are they going to go in and, and compete? Hell, I don't know. They, I mean, we haven't played a season in, in, in the SEC. So for everybody to go, they're going to get killed. God, you must know more than I do. You, you, you must have already played these games because you know way more than I do. So, but, yeah. um, you know, and then uh, – You can't even say that because we played Florida in the bowl game last year. I mean, we got a winning record against the SEC. And, and boy, you haven't played a full se- – I and SEC hasn't played a full season in the Big 12. But your argument is invalid. Your argument is invalid. Right. And, and it, it, I, I get it. And SEC guys can come in and tell me what they want. And Big 12 and Big 10, I get it. I understand where you're coming from. But you're, you're going to say, and this is coming from certain Big 12 teams, oh, you're leaving um, um, because of this and this and this. Uh, you're going to do mediocre. Well, so what does that say about – what does that say about your team? If Oklahoma dominated for the last six years, what does that say about your team? You're going to sit there and say, well, you're going to be mediocre. Well, then if we're mediocre, then we just beat a bunch of way less mediocre teams. We beat a bunch of bad teams. So that's saying that Oklahoma State is bad, Baylor's bad, Kansas State is bad. Give me a damn break. You're just, I, and I still have a question that has been unanswered, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But you're right. We and I'm, I got off on a tangent because I'm getting I'm getting upset about people's speculation <laughs> crap. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're moving. Whether Okie State fans like it, whether Baylor fans like it, whether the Big Twelve likes it, we're moving. It, it just moved. And ladies and gentlemen, I've said this from this this video to the very first video I made about Oklahoma and Texas League. It is for the money, and it's for the better. It's going to better the schools. It's going to better the other students that are coming in for uh, med school and the, the, the law school and whatever it is that those kids want to do, they are going to benefit from OU and Texas moving to the SEC. It's just going to happen. And that's the way football is. And that's, that's the NIL. That is the – and, and, and say what you want. Probably why Lincoln left is the NIL. It's it's going to benefit him and his kids or his family, whatever the case may be. The NIL is going to benefit him there as well. And that's going to change the landscape. Dusty and, and I have talked about it. You and I have talked about it. Vern and I have talked about it. The NIL is going to change the landscape of college football, and you're already seeing it. From coaches to players, it's going to happen. My biggest Absolutely. problem is – my biggest problem is, is why do these other teams care if we're leaving? They can't give me an answer. Why do you care? Oklahoma State, you should be happy that Oklahoma is leaving. You now have a chance to rule the Big 12. You should not care if OU is I, leaving. It, it's got to be, to me, in my mind, I'm thinking they have to be upset because they know OU being good and being in that conference, whether they beat them every single year or not, it still brings talent to the Big 12. So now you talk about, hey, OU and Texas are leaving. Granted, Texas has been down a couple of years, but you're still talking about two of the top storied programs in Big 12, uh, you know, Big 8, whatever conference it was. They've been top schools for a very long time, for decades, and now you're seeing them leave. That's going to hurt the conference as a whole, money-wise, recruit, recruiting-wise. You know, it's going to help OU in Texas, and it's going to help the SEC. Because, again, you're talking about two-storied programs going to another conference, which has been the dominant conference for years now, right? Which is what everybody says, but, I mean, I agree with you. It's hard to say that when – yeah, maybe you beat us once or twice here and there when we played. But, again, like you said, we haven't played a full season in the SEC. The SEC no SEC teams other than Missouri 
And Texas A&M has played full seasons in the Big 12. And look what Texas A&M and Missouri did. Nothing. They did nothing but maybe a year here and there. And then they haven't done done anything in the SEC. Texas A&M has won games. They've had winning records. But they're not dominant. They're not going ten and two, or eleven and one, or hell, even nine and three. So they might have went nine and three one time since they've been in the SEC, maybe. When Johnny Manziel was there, but I just, it's it's all it's all money. Any team that's going to get mad for OU and Texas leaving is because they know that now they're losing recruiting and they're losing money. Because you're bringing in teams, yeah. You're bringing in four teams. Why didn't you bring in two other teams when we were trying to build the conference back up? Now you're going to wait for Texas and Oklahoma to leave and then be like, oh, now we want to get four teams. Yeah. But even those teams, other than Cincinnati, you know, Cincinnati's had a good couple years. Houston has had a a good year. They're like one of those hit or miss, mate. But are they going to do that good in the Big 12? Is BYU going to come in and do that good in the Big 12? We don't know. They haven't been there. They can go 11 and 0, 12 and 0 on the season, but you beat Notre Dame. Okay, that's that's probably your top your top win, hands down. Who else have you played? Good are they point. are I, they going to do I, that I mean, when they come to the Big 12? I I honestly think they'll compete. I do. I mean, I don't want to say they won't compete because that's that's like people saying oh you won't compete in the sec so i i, I want to say listen every team is a division if, if they're in division one these are kids i mean that goes all the way down to division two to division three it's still college football you've made it to a place where a lot of us haven't and so whether you're at cincinnati or whether absolutely you're so I, I, I want to say they'll compete, but my big – and again, in, in, if that's what it is, then fine. If, you know, if, they're, if they're worried about recruits, then maybe it's time you stop hanging on the coattails of OU in Texas to get recruits and get your butt out there and hit the trail. I'm not saying they're not doing that. I'm not – because I, I honestly can't answer that. But if, if that's part of your reasoning, if that's, you know, Gundy or, or Matt Campbell or – Dave Aranda or any of those coaches, if that's their problem that they think because they're leaving, they're going to lose recruits. I don't think so. I mean, I mean, and that's just me. They may not get, but let's think about it. Even with OU and Texas in there, and nothing against Oklahoma State. Listen, guys, nothing against you guys, but you've been top 30. You've been in the mid 30s or in the, in, in the low 20s and you're recruiting every year. So I don't see how that's OU's fault. If they leave, that's still not OU's fault that you're not getting recruits. Well, and if Texas is leaving, hell, Texas is getting five stars, but I mean, and they're what four, four and eight, four and seven, yeah. But I mean, you gotta, you also gotta think about it. If if you're if if you're a five star recruit, right, and you have a chance to go start at the University of Oklahoma, or you have a chance to go start at the University of Kansas or the University of Oklahoma State or the University of Kansas State. It's really just going to be your preference, I guess, on, okay, what talent's going to be around you. What, you know, it, it's hard, man. Recruiting's tough. Like, and, and I'm not and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know about recruiting. I don't because I, I try to look at it like different ways. Okay, like uh, why would a top quarterback want to go to a, a school that already has a top quarterback? But then again, you look at it, you know, a five-star quarterback, you're going to assume it's going to be at a program for a max of three years. One of those being a redshirt year, probably going to start two years. So you got to think, out of that three years, you're going to have, you want another five-star recruit coming in on his last season so that he can redshirt, sit underneath him, watch him, learn from him, and then he's getting his two years after that guy goes pro. And, I'm, you know, that's going to be for any position, not just a quarterback. That was just an example. But, you know, um, and it's just a matter of, you know, who else is there? What talent is around you? What is the school going to, you know, have to offer as far as, you know, um, that, not the area, but like their 
God, I can't, I can't think of the word. They're, you know, they're buildings and their dorms, yeah. the weight room, the locker room, all the, you know, the stuff that the campus has to offer. And, you know, it's just some schools are, you know, they, they have the, the better um, equipment and then the better necessities that certain better players facility. want. They're going to, you know, they're going to bring the talent facilities. That's the word I couldn't think of it. <laughs> um, but you know they they have those better facilities. They they they're just surrounding them with the other talent. You know it's not like one five star is coming and then you know you got a bunch of three stars, right? So it's just yeah, we're, we're getting a, we're I don't know that it's going to hurt them recruiting. We're getting a bunch of comments now that uh, LSU LSU is expected to hire Brian Kelly. Yeah, I, I, wow. Woo. Well, I don't think Brian Kelly – we wouldn't really? Brian Kelly anyways, I don't think. But that's a, I don't know if that's a good pick for LSU either. I, no. I, I still think Jimbo probably would have been a better <laughs> pick there. But So, let, let's get to it. So, we, we, talk, we, we, we talked about that. So, let's just speculate what, what, what we – and, and <clears throat> what it is. I mean, I still think – and, and this, my number one preference um, – Obviously, I had a knee-jerk reaction about Matt Campbell yesterday. I don't really think they're going to get Matt Campbell. My number one, honestly, is is probably Shane Beamer. I just feel something deep in my soul says Shane Beamer is probably the number one and or Coach V. Um, uh, so other than that, who else really is out there that – I mean, Lane Kiffin – I don't think Lane Kiffin's leaving Missouri. I, I don't – I don't think Lane – or excuse me, Mississippi. I don't think well, Lane Kiffin's <laughs> leaving Mississippi at all. Now, I, I, I don't know why he would. Like, you don't come out and talk all that trash saying, talking about how you're going to beat Alabama and then get your rear end smacked to turn around and leave. But, I mean, he's always rumored to move around. I mean, he he bounces around like a basketball, really, to other teams. Yeah. Um, you know, you keep hearing Cliff Kingsbury, but I don't – I don't – He and he never even gave a straight answer when asked about it. But I don't see – his team is 9-2. and two leading the NFC West. Yeah. <laughs> and that's you're, you're with Kyler being injured. Yeah. Like, you're in the NFL making more money than you're – well, I mean, I can't say more money, but I guess the only reason that you would leave is if Oklahoma said, hey, we're going to offer you money and it's more, and then you decide that you want to be back on the college scene. But I still don't see that because, again, he's got a team that's 9-2, and two, one of the better records in the NFL. So – Personally, my personal opinion, I don't think they're going to be able to get him out um, of Arizona. Matt Campbell, I don't think, will leave Iowa State. I think I think for him, no, he hasn't won a Big 12 championship there. But, man, look at their program compared to before he got there. Uh, you've got to tip your hats to Matt Campbell for what he's done at Iowa State. Um yeah. Uh, who else was there? Man, I, 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 you know, Coach V. I don't, I don't know why he wouldn't. You know, we were talking to Sean earlier, and he just doesn't think that he wants to be a head coach. But I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, if you get a chance to, to coach at the University of Oklahoma, I don't know that. Like, if you get the phone call, if he doesn't make the phone call, and and Joe C calls you and says, hey, man. Do you want to come coach at the University of Oklahoma, or do you want to continue to be a defensive coordinator? Um, I can't imagine him making more money being the defensive coordinator at Clemson um, than you would as a head coach at the University of Oklahoma. I would love to see it, but again, you know, rumor mill is going to keep running. You know, was he at the airport? Was he not at the airport? I, I don't know. I can't, maybe he was there. I wasn't at the airport. I can't tell you. I but, yeah. You know the, that. Uh, and we saw the other picture. We saw the other picture that was supposedly uh, Venable's son with one of the the Clemson players doing horns down, saying "Boomer sooner." So <laughs> you know, again, who knows how accurate yeah. that is? But uh, I've heard, I've seen speculation about them trying to somehow get Dabo Sweeney. 
I love Dabo Sweeney, honestly. But again, I think that's another coach that you're not going to pull away from the program that they've worked so hard to build. And like, this is the first yet one year out of what, six, six or seven that you're not in the top four. That's not, that's yeah. not a bad tenure. I, I just, it's hard for me to see them pulling away a coach like that. I could see him trying to go after the Cincinnati coach. Luke Fickle. Yeah. I couldn't remember his name. Man, I saw like a whole list. Yeah, like, I, oh, it's actually, you, you posted it. It was the, the Vegas odds. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think we could see, I, I honestly think it just, I think they're going to go, oh, they're probably going to go either a DC or an OC. If they go in, I don't think they're going to go a sitting head. I don't think they're going to take a sitting head coach. Um, I, I just don't think that. I think they're going to go for a hot OC or DC. The only one sitting coach that I think that they might is Matt Rule out of Carolina. He used to coach at Baylor and now is a Carolina Panther. Maybe they could go after him. I just I, – I would love Luke Fickle too. Don't get me wrong. And I would love Matt Rule. But I just – I don't know if they go for a sitting coach. So, like you said, Venables – um and 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 there's that kid out, uh, out of Georgia that's the defensive guy out of Georgia they talked about him so I don't know I want somebody that's got SEC uh, uh you know lineage SEC uh yeah lineage is I guess is the best word I like you can't I, you could think facilities I can't think of the word I'm looking for but I just want I just want a defensive Red, guy yeah <laughs> But yeah, I, I definitely well, want a defensive but, guy. You know, I think I think we can we can get an offensive coordinator, you know, to be able to run the same style offense that we run. You know what I mean? I I think there's guys out there that they could go get for the offensive coordinator. I would rather have a defensive minded head coach to where we keep the D where we have it right now, but better. Like keep improving, I guess I should say, because they have. Uh, Alex Grinch has been involving those players um, and, and the recruits coming in. So I think if we get somebody, like especially like Venables, uh, he's good, good at recruiting. Um, and he, you know, he he's a he's a passionate guy. I, I mean, I, I I'm not going to be shocked if he takes that job. Yeah. Uh, Dusty, Dusty says, what about Stoop staying on? I've thought about that as well. I. I I could see. I mean, in the realm of possibilities, that's there, and I just don't know how possible it is. I, I could see it happening. I really could. Maybe a year till they till they focus on and they get the guy that they want. I don't know. But go ahead. Is he the brother that's at Kentucky, or was that Kentucky? No, he's talking about Bob. He's he's talking about Bob staying on. Oh, no. I I I don't I don't think I that I want to say I even heard him say he basically turned that down at the press conference um, because somebody asked and he was like no Josie you know he's not going to wait but and and like I said earlier he can't wait they've like they've got to get somebody uh, and fairly quick to to get these recruits nailed down because like I said early early signing day is the fifteenth. It, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, I, I like where we're going, and and like I told everybody, just man, just let it go, let it let it play out. Let let these let these kids say that what they want to say. Let them be in the portal if they want. Let them let them decommit because again, with commitment and decommitment, they can recommit just like that, and they can jump out of the portal just like that. That's the difference between the portal and the committing and somebody transferring, just transferring and sitting out. So we can still get these guys back. Does it look crappy yeah. right now? Absolutely. Uh, and, and but that, but that's why I was saying, that, I, I, but that's why I'm saying, I think that they're going to, they're going to get a coach and it's going to be fairly quick because they, they, they know that they're on the verge of possibly losing these recruits. So they know that, Hey, you know, we really need to focus in, get a head coach nailed down so that we can get him on the road, get 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 his staff on the road to try to reel some of these back in if they are, you know, one foot out the door. Um, but, like, yeah, I mean, I agree. Yeah, 
it that's not a sure thing that they're gone just because they enter the portal or just because they decommit they they can always come back heck you you hire somebody and they're like oh yeah i'm right back in or maybe they choose to play for somewhere else it, it is what it is there's players out there um we're not short of talent i think i think it will you know it hurts it hurts when you lose certain players and i mean i'm not gonna lie i there's one person that i'm really worried about entering the transfer portal and leaving. Caleb Williams. And that would be Caleb Williams. I, I agree. And so, and I wouldn't uh, be shocked, here's what I wanna, here's honestly. What I yep. So as soon as we get the news, make uh, as soon as we find something out, I want you to – hopefully you'll be available. Uh, so once we find that, shoot me an email or a text. Let me know what your time is, and we'll do another, we'll do another uh, show for this one. Um, but I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, Man, as soon as that broke, I was like, I, I text you right away. I was like, that's what our show is going to be about. Um, but I'll have you back for the, the radio show later. Absolutely. But, uh, plan on plan on for as soon as we get news, when the news breaks of who's coaching, uh, make yourself available, and we'll, we'll go to town on it, brother. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. All right, guys. Like I said, and like, like Chris and I said tonight, just let it play out. I, be emotional absolutely i want you to be emotional he wants you to be emotional be emotional be mad be happy be sad whatever the case may be that shows your dedication to ou football and i back you 100 percent on how you feel so with that being said we will uh chris and i'll let you know as soon as we get more information on who the coach is and, and they break it we'll bring you a, a new show we'll talk about it but thanks for guys everybody for uh participating and all the great questions you had uh, and great comments. Appreciate you coming out. And as soon as we get more, we'll let you know. So I'll see you later, bud. See you, man. All right, bud.